Hello, my name is Alyssa Velcourt and I am the Science and Math Librarian here at JMU. Today I am going to go over the topic of scholarly literature in the sciences. From this video, you will learn how to evaluate multiple resources and effectively use them to find information, search relevant information on a topic, and determine the appropriateness of a source. Before we dig into how to find resources, let's go over the basics of where to find resources at JMU. There are four different library locations at JMU, Carrier, Rose, Music, and ETMC. Rose Library is on East Campus and holds most of the science-related books. Materials that you want to check out can be requested from any library and then delivered to the library that is in the most convenient location to you. When it comes to journal articles, most of those are found online through our paid or free databases. If you cannot find the article you want, you can use Interlibrary Loan or ILO. This gets the materials you want that JNU does not own. Research can be time consuming, but if you know where to go for information and who can help, you can save time. Remember, research is a process. It will take time. Using library resources will make good use of your time. Reading the abstract of an article will save you time. Lastly, take time to ask for help when you get stuck, for you have a personal librarian here to help. Let's talk about what scholarly scientific literature is. Scholarly scientific literature can usually be found in subject-specific resources and databases that you can find through JMU libraries. This type of literature is often found in what you will hear called scholarly, academic, or peer-reviewed journals. These types of journals are created by and written for academics and researchers in that field. Scholarly journals require references and each paper submitted to a scholarly journal has to go through a review process that is made up of experts in the field. The purpose of these journals is to share information out to the academic community. So what is the difference between a scientific scholarly journal and a science magazine? Magazines are written to help communicate science news to the general public. Those who write in science magazines might not be an actual scientist, but instead a journalist who focuses on science communication. Magazine articles might not even list who authors the article. The article also does not usually contain a list of references to where they obtain their information. Also, magazines often include many advertisements for products. Journals, on the other hand, are written to communicate science within the scientific community. They are written in a specialized language that only experts in that field might understand. They are also written by an expert in their field and include the author's name and also the institution the author is from. At the end of a journal article, there is a list of references of where the information came from. Just like a magazine, scholarly journals include a variety of articles that include research articles, review articles, editorials, corrections, and current news briefs. We are going to look more into the difference between a research article and a review article. A research article, also known as a primary article, presents results of original research. It is a direct observation in which the author is who conducted the research. Generally, a research article is made up of an introduction, methods, results, discussions, and conclusions section. A review article, also known as a secondary article, presents a summary of previously conducted research. They look closely at a particular topic during a certain time period. Because they review many research articles, they're also very helpful to use to get a good overview of a topic and they have many references that you can look at. There are many tools out there to find scholarly literature. Sure, you could use Google Scholar or you could use a database created by a professional scholarly organizations. Using a database like Scopus in a biology class can help you save time. Why should you use a database over Google Scholar when starting a research topic? Let's find out the similarities and differences between the two. Google Scholar is most helpful when you already know the title and or authors of the article that you want to find. When on campus and connected to JMU Wi-Fi, you will be able to link right to articles that are part of the JMU libraries databases. Google Scholar, like Google, does not have the ability to focus on your search by subject area or filter your results. So while it is a quick way to find an article to, you already know about, it is not the best tool to use when you want to search a topic. Here I am in Google Scholar searching for DNA barcoding. When I get my results, there are over a hundred thousand. This is not a realistic number to sort through to find relevant papers. 
When it comes to a good number of search results, think about how many pages you click through Google to find a good answer. You can see the filters on Google Scholar are also very broad and do not get subject specific. This can make going through this many results difficult. Let's explore a subject specific resource. When it comes to using these, they make it easier to find relevant information, which then saves you time. If you have a question about using a subject specific database, always feel free to contact your librarian. We are here to help. Scopus is a large multidisciplinary science and social science scholarly literature database that is a great resource to use. There are many filters that can help you narrow down your search. Now I am searching DNA barcoding in Scopus. You will see I retrieved a lot of results with this search. No worries, with the limiters available, we will be able to get that number down. This left side is filled with great ways to limit, including by document type, keywords, and even language. These filters are very detailed and can help you get a more manageable number of results. You can also add more words to limit your search. With adding these limiters, we have a manageable 82 documents. The default search is by date. You can change to sort by relevance to see papers that are most likely ones you might need. Once you select an article, you see an abstract, author keywords, and the references of this paper. When using a database like Scopus, how do you search it? You need to break your search phrase into searchable concepts. This will create keywords. For example, a competition among plants in a field, particularly marigolds and other species, might be your search phrase. Is this a good search phrase? What kind of results would you expect from this? Is it too broad or is it too narrow? You should brainstorm synonyms of your phrase. Once you break this phrase into concepts, you are ready to search in a database. Still having no luck? Try different keywords. Use the word or to broaden your search for more results. Use and to narrow your search for less results. Using quotes will bring results with the words together as a phrase, such as plant species. Ask for help. Here are some other tips that might help you search. When searching for barcoding, you will not get results that include barcode, barcodes, or barcoded. Some of these terms might be useful. In order to retrieve them, translate the search term. In most databases, asterisk is the translation symbol. Barcode, asterisk will gather all of the above. Be careful when using translation. If interested in articles about cats and you search cat asterisk, you will retrieve articles about cats, but also articles about catapults, catalysts, or cathedrals, among others. Now that you have searched through the literature and found some good results, what should you do? First, read the abstract of the paper. An abstract provides a nice summary of what the paper is about. By reading this, you can first tell if you will actually understand the article. Secondly, it will allow you to know if this article is on your topic. Taking time to read the abstract now can save you a lot of frustration later. You don't want to save it or print it out take it home and read it a week later to find out that it is not on your topic. Also, look at the references of the paper on your topic. Looking at the references can lead you to other articles that might be relevant to the topic and can be helpful for your research. So now that you have an article you like, check the full text box at JMU. This might lead you right to the full article and you can usually download it as a PDF. If it does not, Select Alternative Pathways and then select an article link on that page. What if you choose an article that we do not have? If you select the Check for Full Text at JMU link and you see red text, we can help you retrieve this article through Interlibrary Loan. Never pay for an article while at JMU. I hope this overview will help you succeed in your research project this semester. Remember, subject-specific searches can save you time. Use the databases I have shown you to search. Also, search smart. Thank you. 
Please email me if you have any questions.